Hey now, I hope everybody's doing great. Thank you for tuning in to Race Grooves. Uh, I found another bag of red lines that uh, I bought at a convention. Uh, I don't know, this is a bag that they you gave me to uh, help carry my stuff. Uh, apparently it has to do with insomnia, it's not for me. Today I'm going to use my Lazy Susan. I have my rotating display stand. I still got to make a new surface, just use a round styrofoam. Hmm. I'm going to make one for my Lazy Susan as well. Uh, it's about the right size. Besides, when the camera zoomed in, you won't even see any of this edge. I just picked those things up at like uh, Michael's. They have a lot of crafts as far as uh, rotating display stands. That one right there, I bought quite some time ago. So I do not know where they are available now. Actually, what I mean, that one display stand, that one, uh, you know, it's different than the ones that I see online nowadays. Um, so I don't know where to get that one that I had gotten before. I definitely want to get all my uh, red lines sorted. I don't even know what these are. I bought them. Uh, I don't remember what they were, but I want to get all my red lines. I got to get them inventoried because in April, first weekend of April is the Dallas Nationals, the Nationals convention or just a convention. Hey, check it out. Uh, I got a, uh, we, a tuner. This is what the, what you use to tune up your uh, red lines. Now, since I got that one, I'm pretty sure I got bought that from Anita. So that means most of these probably are from Anita, um, especially since they're all packed the same. Anyways, uh, so first week of April, I will be in Dallas for that convention or the Nationals. But uh, now there's another show coming up and Redline sellers are going to be there. That's what I hear. The Vegas Toy Con. I put a uh, link in the description. I'm not, a, I'm not affiliated with the event at all. So uh, I, to be honest, I couldn't even tell you really who's running it. There's, there's been some guys doing shows in Vegas for a while. So I would assume it's the same guys. But I'm not, I'm not paying for any of the extra packages. I'm not buying any of their Code 3 customs. Uh, I'm just going to pay, I think it's 25 bucks to attend the, sh to attend the show. I have to double check the, uh, the information. But uh, the link's in the description. Please contact them if you have any questions. I can't answer any of your questions. I don't, I, I don't know anything. I'm just going to go. So it looks like, uh, yep, this is the time when I bought some spoilers from her. Now... Let me go ahead and get some close-ups. I've said this in previous red line videos. You know, conditions, you know, fairly important to me. You know, I want it, I want it to look pretty good, but it. Do, I don't need to have the rarest or the mintiest color. Uh, how, how did I say this? I don't need the mintest cars. I don't need the rarest color, colors. I just pretty much want them to roll straight. And she, that's when she said, you know, you could just tune them up. Well, if, if it rolls... If I can get it straighter when I buy it, that's uh, less tuning if I have to do it at all. So that's definitely why I buy them is they got to roll straight. Oops, excuse me. Looking pretty good. I don't even care. That one looks like it has a mispainted red line. It's a little wobbly, a little wonky. But uh, it rolls fine. And... This one's a little slow for some reason. That one, that one rolls all right. It's got a little curl. As a matter of fact, look, uh, it's not even, the front wheel's not even touching the ground. It's not even spinning. I have to do some tuning on that one for sure. Now, even though I said that I don't have to have the mintiest cars, these are not cheap. <laughs> if, if high prices uh, bother you, you probably better be sitting down. So we're going to start with the lowest one, all right? This one, $85, uh, fairly affordable. It's the heavy Chevy, copyright 1969. This one was made in Hong Kong. It has a white interior. Some cars, you know, that's the deal with the colors. I mean, that's the deal with the expensive part. Uh, some cars, depending on where it was made, if it was USA or if it was Hong Kong, uh, what color it is. Some colors are harder to get. Uh, I don't particularly have any rare colors as far as I know. Uh, the prices I wind up paying are basically due to popularity and the condition of the car. 
So, you know, under 100 bucks, yeah, it's expensive, but it's a premium piece for my collection. Up next, $100. That's the asking price. T&T Bird, 1969 Mattel. Oh, yeah, made in Hong Kong. I spend the money, but this might be the only sample that I buy. Well, especially in this condition. I might buy, maybe I'll get more colors, but I, I don't necessarily have to. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, spoilers like this, mm, ain't cheap. They, they cost some money. It's a very popular segment to collect. Asking price, $120. I always buy a few at a time, so I don't pay that price. Uh, you know, I get a little discount if I buy multiples, right? Doesn't hurt to ask. Here's the Nitty Gritty Kitty. Again, 1967 Mattel. Mm, I don't see Hong Kong. There it is. It's down there in the corner. Made in Hong Kong. I'm not sure what color they call this. It's not white. It's kind of a grayish color. I'm sure someone will post a comment and help out. Something else that I do, I try to pick different colors, so this way I don't, I want to have a variety for my collection. Uh, some people, you know, they like to focus on certain colors. Now, if you get pink, if you're going to collect pink, uh, you're going to spend some money. Pink is uh, definitely a more costly color to acquire. You know, a lot of people speculate it's because boys used to smash their toys, and they always smashed the pink one. They didn't want the pink one, so maybe that one's harder to find or a, uh, Less common nowadays. I couldn't tell you for sure if that's the truth. Makes sense to me. And we're moving on up. $135. This is a red TNT bird. This one, again, made in Hong Kong. The chrome on the red stripe wheels. Pretty good condition. Uh, hardly, probably wasn't played with that much at all. It uh, appears to have an off-white interior. Let me check. Mm, I think technically they might call that white. It's kind of creamy, but maybe it's white. Just like modern cars, sometimes there's variations. Painted roofs, non-painted roofs. Uh, I don't know. I don't keep track. I'm not a red line guy. I have to go to the experts to ask those types of questions. Uh, you know, if I know it, I know it. But otherwise, uh, I, don't, I don't talk about it if I don't know it. Let's go ahead and show the red and the blue together. Hopefully my camera is uh, close enough to centered. Eh, close enough. Maybe I'll do some head-to-head -head downhill racing with these. $150. I see Kings, probably King Cuda. I don't think there, there's any others. There you go. King Cuda. I forgot the year of the last one. 1969. Yeah, you know what? I think this is a year that I went through and picked up the early spoilers that I did not have. They're not cheap, so, oh, I gotta get that off. They're not cheap, so, you know, I've been waiting. Especially when they're in condition like this. This is fantastic condition. Now, you might see some slight toning in the paint and stuff like that. This sticker's kinda hanging off a little bit. Leave it alone, just leave it alone. That's part of the uh, condition of the car. It's part of the history of the car. Just leave it alone. Well, that's how I feel anyways. Again, really good chrome. Look at the tip in the center. Hardly even worn down. So probably didn't get that much play at, at all. Heck, it could have been in a blister and it could rub off just like that. Well, I don't know about both sides. You can see on this side, it's worn down a little bit. And this nice orange one. Yeah, this one's going to get expensive. $235. That was the asking price, of course, like I've been saying. And there's people nowadays, you know, they say, hey, hey, uh, I, I want to buy the Acceleracer's Reverb, but I don't want to pay that kind of money. Well, guess what? I want red lines, and you know what? Just That's what they're worth. Here you have Diddy Gritty Kitty, 1969. Hong Kong again, so they might have all been Hong Kong, as a matter of fact. And have you been noticing the base condition? Nice and shiny, uh, hardly any tarnishing, if at all. This one might have been more expensive because of the color, but look, the other ones I had were red, blue, and green, and I think with the assortment that she had at the time, you know, I couldn't find an orange one in the other cars. I'm, I'm speculating what I might have been thinking back then, but uh, I wanted a variety of colors too. Uh, I don't know how shiny and nice this shows up uh, on your screen, but uh, in my monitor, she's pretty. Let me pass through, take a look at the top sides. There you can see a little toning or bottling right there. Uh, I think that 
Uh, we put the stripes on the car. Um, but since these two are the same, maybe some of these stripes were put on uh, in the blister. Yeah, I'm not positive. I don't know. I know that some cars come with sticker sheets. You see that sticker is kind of peeling off a little bit. Really nice condition. Get a little stripe right there. Really, really nice condition. Uh, I hope you're enjoying checking these out. Hopefully you can pick up some red lines yourself. Hey, uh, even if they're just, uh, if they've been played with a little bit, it's the 50th anniversary of Hot Wheels. So pick something up from the beginning, a little sample, do what you can. Thank you for taking the time to check out my Redline video. I have a playlist with all of my Redline videos. You can check it out if you'd like. In the meantime, have fun with your cars and happy collecting. Bye-bye.